Hi and welcome to my workshop. My name is John. I'm a radio hobbyist and today I want to talk about tuning capacitors. Uh, what you see before you is kind of a generic tuning capacitor from an old radio uh, in the 50s and it's pretty typical of uh, tuning capacitors that you'll find in all American 5 radios from about 1940 through the, the late 60s. And uh, what we're going to do today is, is uh, just kind of explore these uh, find out how they hook up according to the schematic symbols that might be confusing to some. It was confusing to me, that's why I'm making this video. It took me a while to catch on and I thought maybe I could help some, some other people as well. Okay, the first thing I want to do is uh, kind of dissect the uh, tuner so you can see what the different parts are. And that's the first step, I think, in trying to d determine uh, exactly what it does and how to hook it up in the radio. As you can see, there's several parts to the uh, tuning capacitor. The two important parts are the stator, which is stationary, and the rotor, which turns. Uh, the other parts of the frame that can hold it all together. There's an additional capacitor in here. It's called a small mica capacitor, and we'll see that on the schematic later. There's also just a lug that will hook to the stator itself. Now, the rotor is connected to the frame, so if you need to hook to the rotor, you just can connect right to the frame anywhere or the uh, bolts that go through the chassis that hold the frame on to the chassis. Now uh, the tuning capacitor acts like any other type of capacitor. I don't want to go into the explanation or definition of capacitor here but it does uh, store a certain amount of uh, electrical current and releases it at a certain rate and all capacitors have different rates of storage and different rates of uh, release and that uh, basically is how capacitors work. The tuning capacitor is an air capacitor. The fins from the rotor uh, go in between the fins of the stator and depending on what percentage of the two are facing each other uh, you have a different level of capacitance. I think uh, tuning capacitors start somewhere at like 25 picofarad and go up to 100 and some picofarad. I, I don't remember exactly what. but. Um, the ability to variate the, the uh, capacitance is necessary for the tuning capacitor. Now the tuning capacitor hooks up to your antenna wire and the antenna wire uh, by itself actually um, picks up every frequency in the area. It, it, uh, it absorbs all frequencies. What the tuning capacitor does is add capacitance a certain level of capacitance to that antenna wire to tune it into just one frequency at a time. And uh, to do that it needs all of these parts. The rotor, as I said earlier, is going to rotate in between the fins of the stator. Uh, the rotor is connected to the frame, which means uh, you can connect a wire to the frame when the schematic calls for it to be connected to the rotor or you can connect it to the bolts that hold it onto the chassis uh, if, if you want to connect to the rotor. The stator on the other hand, if you need to connect directly to the stator on one side of the uh, tuner capacitor you'll actually see stator lugs that will enable you to do that. On the other side you'll probably see a little mica capacitor. This is not part of the tuning capacitor, it's a separate capacitor and it's shown separately on your schematic. Um, what it does, it adds uh, a stable uh, variation of capacitance to fine-tune your um, tuning capacitor. So when you align your radio, you're going to be using this mica capacitor. You just screw it, turn either right or left, just to bring it into uh, optimum level. Because all electronic parts are not exactly the same, and, and so you need this variation. Uh, of capacitance to bring your particular particular elements in your radio to the highest possible quality that you can get and that small mica capacitor will help you do that. So now that we understand the four different five different parts of the uh, capacitor and we understand that it helps to what it does actually is tune in the antenna to a particular frequency uh, then we're, we're ready to take a closer look at uh, the schematic itself. 
Okay, now here we have a typical AA5 uh, radio schematic. And if you look at the uh, colored part, so you see I've got two parts that are colored red, two parts that are colored uh, blue. These separate parts represent the two different gangs on the capacitor. If you remember the capacitor I showed you when we first started this video, it had two different gangs on it. One, the, the uh, fins look larger on the rotor and the other appear to be smaller. Um, so those are the two different parts of uh, the tuner and they're, they're, they're listed here on the schematic separately as you would suspect. The top one that's hooked up to the antenna, uh, if you look at the red portion right there, you'll see that the top part of the uh, symbol is just a straight line like a normal capacitor but the bottom of that uh, red symbol there is like a curved line with an arrow on it. Now that curved line with the arrow on it represents the rotor. So we see that one side of the antenna is hooked up to the rotor and the other side is hooked up to what we call the stator. That, that solid bar that goes straight across is the stator. And um, both of those then run over to the small mica capacitor, which I'm showing here in blue. And that's usually represented with a um, adjustable type of uh, uh, system by that curve line on the bottom and the arrow that goes through it. So to recap, um, the one side of the antenna hooks up to the rotor. Uh, which is the bottom signal of the red part and you can hook the wire up anywhere on the frame or the bolts that are attached to the frame that hold it to the chassis as long as it's insulated from the chassis. Um, the stator, uh, there's a small lug on one side of the uh, tuning capacitor that does not have the mica capacitor on it. You can hook your wire right directly up to that lug and that moves on over to the mica capacitor. The mica capacitor is already on the tuner and it's already connected to the stator and uh, it's already connected to the frame and those are the two connection points that that uh, adjustable mica capacitor have. So now uh, let's take a look at the big picture again and so now you can see the uh, lower part of the tuner and this is going to be that section of the tuner with uh, fewer fins than the top section. Uh, I'm going to call that the smaller uh, gang but really uh, sometimes the fins on the smaller gang are actually smaller than the uh, other part so that's a little confusing. Either way your radio should already be hooked up uh, to it the way that uh, that it should be. So if you just follow these wires, uh, I think you can now understand where to hook the wires up to on your uh, tuning capacitor uh, if you need to or if a wire is broken and you aren't sure where it goes. The uh, stator uh, needs to be hooked up to one of the stator lugs. The um, rotor can be hooked up to the frame or any uh, continuous bolt that holds the frame onto the chassis. And if you need to hook up to the mica capacitor, um, then as you see on the top part, the uh, mica capacitor goes directly into the very first tube. So what, uh, what that wire is, you, you'll hook up to the um, gang that has the uh, highest number of fins on it uh, and lead that directly into the uh, input uh, probably screen grid of the uh, number one uh, tube. So hopefully that gives you a little better idea of uh, you know where wires are going to connect on your tuner, what it does and what the symbols represent. Okay, and so here I'll just show you real briefly uh, the two gangs. You can see the smaller fins actually have the more uh, higher number of fins. So that's actually going to be the part that hooks up to the antenna. And uh, here we see the mica capacitors. These are variable capacitors that you'll use to align your radio with later. Those lugs will allow you to connect a wire to them. On the back side, uh, well here's the uh, rotor. As you can see, uh, that 
rotor is connected to the axle, the whole axle turns, and the rotor uh, is insulated from the stator. Uh, the two should not be continuous. And you can see how it turns right there, and, and each little variation causes a different frequency. And so there you have it. I hope this lesson helped you a little bit in understanding the function of the tuning capacitor uh, and where to hook up the wires to it according to the schematic symbols. And uh, if everything gels together, uh, then we're pretty much learning to get it because I just uh, bothered about 10 people on antiqueradios.com to teach me how uh, all this works and I'm just passing that along because you know honestly I was looking for a video like this uh, when I had questions myself so that's why I'm giving back uh, to you because uh, you know you give a little and you take a little so uh, good luck with all your projects and I certainly hope this helped if it did I hope you'll leave a message and let me know uh, if, if you think it needs to be changed somehow I hope you'll let me know that as well uh, anyway, um, good luck with your radios again, and uh, enjoy the hobby. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful way to pass your time, and we can actually save little pieces of history along the way, too, I think. So uh, I think we're accomplishing something. Uh, thanks for watching.